All right, guys, welcome back. For those of you that are new to the channel, my name's Aaron. I've been a lineman on the East Coast of Canada for about 19 years now. In today's episode, as promised, we're going to be reviewing the Husqvarna Mad Saw. It is the industry's first and only dielectric gas-powered pole saw that's individually tested to meet OSHA 1910.269. Now, this is just the head of it. It doesn't quite fit in the cab of my truck. So, let's head inside. So let's first take a quick look at all the different parts that came with the saw. Virtually everything you see here on this table came in the box for the saw. Everything you need to put this thing together, except for maybe this little rag thing right here, but we'll get into that a little bit later. We're going to take a look first at the engine, the main body of the saw, the 525 DEPS MAD saw. It has a 25.4 cc motor with a maximum power speed of 8,500 RPM, an idling speed at 3,000, and a power output of one kilowatt. Just a few other pretty standard components. You have, of course, your primer. It says in the instructions to hit that 10 times, I believe it was. The motor's cold, so we'll choke, and see if we can't make everything on the table go flying here. It's not really an on off button, it's always in the on position, you simply slide it forward to stop the saw. One thing that's unique to this chainsaw is the anti vibe handle, you can see it's got some play in it there. You can see the vibration of the motor, the handle is kind of floating around the shaft. There's a rubber pushing inside that handle that helps reduce that vibration. My dog wondering what all the noise is and of course a trigger lock you can't press the throttle down unless you press the trigger lock first we've got an approved tether right here which i've actually used a few times as a handle when i'm reaching really high up i really like how this cap unscrews nothing fancy like some other models so we screwed off, screwed on. Don't have to worry about spilling gasoline out all over the place during storage. Speaking of storage guys, I've already had multiple users message me mentioning that if you want to prolong the life of your Husqvarna saw to make sure to drain all the gasoline out of it when it's not being used for long periods of time. Next, we've got the fiberglass shaft. This, this is the piece that connects the motor to the saw blade. And this is actually what makes the tool so unique. This fiberglass shaft with a fully enclosed fiberglass drive shaft is what's been dielectrically tested according to the OSHA 1910.269. Where that steel spline enters into the internal fiberglass portion of the shaft, that's completely sealed off. That way, no foreign objects or dirt or grime or nothing like that and get inside the stick and affect its dielectric integrity. There are quite a few stickers and warning labels on the stick here. Uh, first tested for Husqvarna by safety test, safetytest.net. Tested when new as per OSHA 1910.269. So there's one very important phrase in that line, it's tested when new. You see, these sticks are tested at 100,000 volts per foot. That's when new, when the fiberglass is shiny new, there's no scrapes in it, no dirt, no debris, no UV damage, all that stuff that affects the dielectric integrity of our equipment. It's extremely important to take good care of this portion of the tool. That's why it's great that those toolless couplers are so easy to use. If that stuff wasn't easy to use, guys wouldn't be as apt to put it away properly in the storage bag. You know, just get thrown away in the tail or left in the back of the truck. Actually, this brings us back to that white little rag I was showing you guys. There are a few companies out there that make live line tools. They all have some sort of a silicone wiping cloth. It actually applies a coating of silicone over the stick, which helps repel any dirt and dust and helps actually protect the stick from any minor abrasions. It's good to give your live line tools 
a wipe down before each and every use. One other extremely important sticker that we have to mention, especially after I just said live line, is it does say not for live line use. And it's not designed to be used directly on live primary. That's why they call this thing the MAD saw. It's an acronym for minimum approach distances. It provides you an extra barrier in the event of an accident. It is to be used only according to minimum approach distances, depending on your particular qualifications. For a certified lineman, the qualifications may differ slightly than let's say a utility arborist, and they also differ depending on geographic location. Uh, I'm in Canada, OSHA regulations apply mostly to the US. We have our own regulations here that are quite similar, but I don't wanna go over any specific numbers in this video. So make sure to follow all the regulations, particular to the company you work for and your geographic location. So back to the toolless coupler, which is an excellent feature on this stick. I did want to mention quite a few guys messaged in my previous video asking about an extension. A lot of pole saws have a telescoping extension. You loosen it off, the insides come out. There's no way you can have an internal extension built into this without affecting its dielectric integrity. So what the manufacturer did was they have another aluminum extension that'll extend the length of the saw from nine feet to 12 and a half feet but your extension is not dielectric tested. Once that's installed on the saw, you have to keep in mind, um, you will be protected as a user behind your, your marker. That black rubber marker is uh, to give yourself a bit of a safety factor of insulated material between you and the conductive part of the stick. So if you do choose to use this extension, it is the only piece that is not toolless. They do provide you with the tool needed. It's got a simple torque spit on the end. I've been, since I've had this tool, I've had it for three or four months now, and I always leave the short piece on, the nine foot bar, this along with the fiberglass and the motor, totals nine feet. It's plenty long for the majority of use. If you do want to swap it out for the longer shaft, it has one screw that goes directly through the aluminum back saw. If you don't need to tighten that up very much and a second screw on the back side that functions much like the quick coupler on the fiberglass that squeezes down in that bar. So you loosen that off, you pop that out and you put on the extension. So now we're going to take a look at the head of the saw, which is equipped with a 12 inch bar and Husqvarna's very own X cut chain. This thing is sharp. I've been using it for three or four months now and it still cuts through those limbs effortlessly. <laughs> Now, I also haven't adjusted the chain yet. You can see here, it looks like I'm starting to get a little bit of slack. So I'll have to tighten that up a little bit, which is perfectly normal for a chain to stretch a little bit after some use. So we'll get that tightened up. There is also a hook mounted on the head of the saw, which is great as you're clearing limbs, you're still protected by your fiberglass stick. Instead of trying to hold the saw out of the way and grab stuff with your hands, this is actually designed to hook and drag them branches out of your way as you cut. There's also your bar and chain oil reservoir mounted on the head with an adjustment that you can adjust the flow of the oil that comes out on the bar. And Husqvarna did provide a quart of X-Guard premium dielectric bar and chain oil, which is formulated with additives to maintain a dielectric strength up to 36 kV in the event of current or voltage being applied to it. As I mentioned earlier, I've been using this saw for three or four months now. So far, I'm very impressed with the overall quality and usability of the product. I've been keeping an eye on the comments on the first video I released when I first received the Mad Saw. There was one individual that said he also had one of the saws. He said, great product, he loves it. Uh, keep in mind that it is designed for pruning. Any pole saw really is, is used for pruning. But at the same time, us Lyman, 
when we do cut trees, we're not out there clear cutting. Usually there's just one or two trees involved. And with a lot of back lot construction, especially in my area, it's not always convenient to have to carry out multiple saws along with all your other rigging, just some of these more isolated areas. So I did want to try tackling an entire tree with, with a full saw. And I had a couple opportunities, one of which the butt of the tree was about 22 inches. It was big enough that the 12 inch blade wouldn't cut it. So I had to attack it from both sides and it worked really good. As long as you let the blade do the cutting, you don't force it through. If you force it through the tree, it's gonna bog down a bit. You let the blade do the cutting and there was no issues whatsoever. So we tried it on a few different trees, works great. I'm confident moving forward that if I gotta tackle a tree back lot, I'm not gonna lug two and three different chainsaws. In fact, for the final cuts when you're at the butt of the tree, the tree's usually compromised. There's oftentimes still tension on it and it's nice to make that final cut without having that blade right there in front of your face. <laughs> yeah. One of my biggest recommendations for anyone that owns the saw is don't get lazy with the storage of the fiberglass portion. I'm lucky myself in this truck, I've got a till dedicated to hot sticks and the stick fits in there great. I can mount it in the bushings on the wall of the till where it's not gonna bounce around and hit up against other sticks. If you don't have enough room in your truck for that type of storage, be sure to put it away in the storage bag. Keep it clean, keep it wiped down. Any of your equipment, that is tested dielectric. You want to take good care of it. One of my favorite things about having this Husqvarna Mad Saw is, and I'm sure anyone that's a lineman that's watching this will understand, when you have not necessarily a newer apprentice, but even someone, someone on your crew that you've never worked with before, when they're up in the air working, no matter how much you keep an eye on them, no matter how well they are trained, when you're not in the driver's seat, it can be nerve wracking watching someone else work. Having the guy up in the air using the mad saw makes me feel much, much more comfortable that they are away from that cutting blade, that they do have an extra barrier of protection in case of an accident, in case of accidental contact. This product is designed for professionals. We don't want homeowners going out and buying this thing and dropping trees near the power lines. You do have to make sure that you follow all your minimum approach distances. That's very important. But just to satisfy my own curiosity, um, we took a high pot test, a high potential test, and we put 30,000 volts across the stick. 30 kV. Yeah. Wow. We hooked it onto the blade on one end and the motor on the other. We put 30,000 volts across that and it passed with flying colors. Now this is nowhere as near the required 100,000 volts per foot in order to meet the OSHA regulations. However, 30,000 volts, that's still a lot. And having been able to see that pass successfully with my own eyes, give me a lot of confidence in the product. We also actually clipped on at the center of the stick, right on the black marker that you keep your hands behind when you're operating it. We clipped on to the center of the stick and then tried on either end, the saw blade and the motor. Again, 30,000 volts and it passed with flying colors. We've had all kinds of opportunity to use this thing in the last few months. Probably the only condition it hasn't seen yet would be extreme cold, but that'll be coming soon enough. So thanks for stopping in guys. I will be sure to include some links and information down below in the description. Any of you out there that have tried this saw, let me know what you think down in the comments. As always, don't forget to drop me a fist bump. Let me know where you're watching from and we'll see you guys next time.